we can see two to three millimeters of gingiva captured exceeding the gingival margins. We have very clear, defined occlusal and incisal surfaces. We don't see any of the tray material showing through the occlusal or incisal areas. We have very clear capture of the gingival margins and, and approximal spaces as well uh, as capturing the very distal of the terminal molars and a little bit of gum tissue exceeding that terminal molar. So what makes this a good impression for aligners uh, is we can see defined capture of the occlusal and incisal surfaces. We don't see any of that tray material showing through. We're looking to have captured at least two to three millimeters of gingiva exceeding the gingival margin um, around the entire arch of the impression. We see very defined and clear capture of all gingival margins. We want to look at these triangles in between each tooth to make sure we have fully captured these in approximal spaces. We're looking for the midline to have been lined up with the hilt of your impression tray. And lastly, we have fully captured the distal of the very terminal molar and also some gingiva exceeding that terminal molar as well. This is an example of an impression uh, that would need to be retaken and if an impression like this was sent to our lab very well would be rejected um, by our lab team once we scanned and saw the amount of defects. So when examining the occlusal surfaces of this patient's teeth, we can see air bubbles uh, in many different places. Air bubbles will happen when the field is not isolated and dry. So we do want to make sure that we're taking our air water syringe, drying the occlusal buckle and lingual surfaces of their teeth prior to seeding that impression. Uh, bubbles can also occur when taking the tray out of the mouth before the light body material has had time to fully set. Some of the light body material has pulled away from the facial aspect of the patient's teeth. We also see indications and marks on the buccal aspect of the anterior teeth where material was pulled away from the impression tray because the impression was removed before the light body material had time to set up. We have not fully and accurately captured the gingival margin of the anterior incisor. We also want to be mindful of tears that occur mostly in the interproximal spaces. We also can see a tear in the impression material right here. Tears occur when there are voids interproximally, which allows the impression material to flow in between the teeth. Uh, so the little black triangles in between teeth, or if we have an ill-fitting bridge where the pontic no longer seats flush up against the gum tissue, we want to proactively cover those areas with either cotton pellets or little wax pellets before taking the impression. So several defects in this impression. We can see we have not fully captured the terminal molars. We have failed to capture two to three millimeters of excess gingiva exceeding the gingival margin. We have captured that in some areas but in other areas, we have not. This defect happens when we fail to move the lip out of the way before fully seating the impression, and the lip prevents the material from flowing into the vestibule area. 
This also is a good example of what we see when we wait too long. It takes too long to load the tray before seating it into the patient's mouth. We can see here that the heavy body material uh, had at least partially set up prior to placing in the mouth. We weren't able to fully seat the impression and the light body material was the only workable material that had not set up prior to getting into the patient's mouth. If we don't use a tray adhesive, we start to get a detachment where the material pulls away from the tray itself when removing the impression, which can lead to a rejected impression. This is an example of a bite registration that was taken not using enough material to fully capture the occlusal surfaces of these back molars. This is an example of inaccurate bite registration. We can see very clear defined occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth. We have captured the entire occlusal surface. We've also captured the incisal edges of the anterior teeth and the bite registration is thick enough to maintain during the shipping process.